We teach the Holocaust because we want to make sure, same reason you teach history, um, a, a, an important historical event. You teach it because you want to learn a lesson from history. And that lesson is that you want to make an impact and change the world today so that such a thing would not occur again. The Holocaust Center of Greater Pittsburgh, located in Squirrel Hill, offers a profound experience with authentic artifacts like this uniform worn by Jews held in Nazi concentration camps. It's the classic striped uniform. And this is, the interesting thing about that uniform is this is the only thing they had. They wore nothing else. This bowl is original. It was the only personal property held by Holocaust victims. They used the bowl to eat to drink, and to relieve themselves. There are many pictures of what's referred to as the mother of all concentration camps, Auschwitz. There are models of how Jews and other victims were held and put to death. Dr. Edie Neve is the director of the Holocaust Center. If you were to move to a certain area at the, uh, the Auschwitz-Birkenau uh, model, when you lift up the top of uh, the uh, showers, the building where the showers took place. It is, it's a fairly graphic kind of visual experience. Auschwitz-Birkenau was uh, the um, largest uh, combination concentration camp and um, extermination camp. Sometimes those who would uh, shoot, those, arm, those officers who would shoot uh, Jews would be too emotionally involved in it and it would be too difficult for them, and so they next decided to use essentially trucks and exhaust from trucks. Um, but that also wasn't quick enough, unfortunately. And so they, it, they de slowly developed the concept of uh, gas chambers and, and, Zycon, B, and Zycon B, Zycon B, which uh, was the uh, pellet that was dropped into the so-called, the euphemism, the uh, showers. Um, for uh, murdering uh, victims. The interesting thing about it is that if 1.3 million uh, individuals died at Auschwitz or were killed or murdered in Auschwitz, there were one million of them were Jews. The center has a stunning glass wall. The names of Pittsburgh Holocaust survivors are etched into the glass. I think it's important because I think that uh, the Holocaust is a massive human event which happened recently. And because it includes uh, so many different victimized groups, um, and because it includes the worst of humanity in humanity's behavior as well as the best in humanity's uh, behavior. And it is also stages. So it begins with mass killings in the East. Neve says this is a full-scale research center and is visited so often by school children, their teachers, as well as high school students and college students. And I think that the teachers would understand that this is an event which is not only a Jewish event, but it's a human event that had ramifications for all civilization. That you teach students that they can change such an event from happening by their individual human behavior the way they respond and they treat their parents, fellow students, their siblings, those who are very different from the, than they are in school, that teachers should teach the responsibility to, that students have to others in their society, others in the world. So Neve, several Holocaust survivors from Pittsburgh, and some 30 local teachers from public and private schools are on their way to Poland for the May 5th March of the Living. These are March of the Living pictures from past years. Participants march silently from the Auschwitz working camp to the Birkenau death camp. Students mostly made the trip in past years, but this year it is teachers, those who have Holocaust history curriculum in their elementary and high schools. How important is it to take 
30 plus teachers from public and parochial schools along with a couple of the survivors to Auschwitz in May. Well, I think that the teachers are really uh, paramount in this um, effort that the Holocaust Center is involved in, uh, to, to continue to help bearing witness and to remember. Zahor, as it is said in, uh, in Hebrew. Um, because the teachers have a tremendous responsibility. Um, um, they are really our link th for the future, to the future. And I think t bringing these teachers who are coming from private, pu uh, parochial, and public schools, some Jewish day schools, but most of them are the public schools, um, for them to be able to continue telling the story and, tell and giving the, the, um, the history, but not only giving the history, giving the lessons of the Holocaust. Because you want to be able to make a connection between what happened then and how these young people, teaching young people today, how they can change the world. They should respect everybody. They shouldn't hate anybody. That's the advice to young people from 80-year-old Jack Sitzimer. He is president of the Holocaust Survivors Organization of Greater Pittsburgh. Sitzimer and other survivors eagerly share their stories of survival with local students and others who visit the Holocaust Center. While the Polish-born Sitzimer is not going on this year's March of the Living, he did return to Poland five years ago, seen in these pictures. It wasn't easy, as the Nazis murdered all in his family. As a 16-year-old boy on March 9, 1942, Sitzimer's mother, father, two sisters, and two brothers were rounded up by the Nazis and told to march briskly to the town square of Mielitz. That's a small town west of Krakow, where they'd be shipped off to concentration camps. People couldn't keep up with the march. They were shot. We had to work, walk very brisk. And one of them was my father. My father was wounded during the when he served in the Austrian army, he walked with a cane. He couldn't keep up with the march, and he was one of them who was killed. He was shot. He was in shot in front of us. And the day his father was shot in cold blood was the same day the Nazis separated him from his mother, two sisters, two brothers. He'd never see them again. They too were eventually murdered. He wishes he had just one picture to remember them. Sitzimer may have survived because he was young and healthy, and Hitler's troops put him to work. You went through six concentration camps. How did you survive? I don't know. I, I say it was luck, sheer luck. But when I was, I tell you, one, why I survived is luck, and why I survived, I was I had typhoid fever. I was unconscious for seven weeks. And after I came through, I came to, I, I was told that somebody saved my life. When he was liberated in 1945, Sitzimer weighed just 72 pounds. Eventually, he moved to Pittsburgh, married, and had two children. Over the past 60 years, He's talked of losing his entire family to the Holocaust. He's talked to young people about never forgetting. And they should accept people what people are as people. They shouldn't look at color. They shouldn't look at religion. Because uh, I didn't have a choice where, who my mother was. Uh, uh, you, born, you come to this world as a person. And you should, you should respect everybody. They shouldn't hate anybody. And, and uh, even though whatever I went through, and after the war was over, I had many chance, well, I was very weak. I was barely alive. And I, and, uh, I seen people uh, killing people because they take vengeance, they find a guard. But I could never do that. I couldn't do that. When I was liberated, I was skin and bone. There was no flesh on me, no meat. I weighed 72 pounds. And I was liberated May the 5th. If I would be, the war was not with May the 8th. 
If I wouldn't be liberated on May the 5th, I wouldn't maybe live another day. I wouldn't be here to talk to you. Sixty years after the liberation, so many of the Holocaust survivors have died or are up in years. A critical reason, says Dr. Neve, why Pittsburgh will be well represented with survivors and local teachers at this week's March of the Living at Auschwitz. And the teachers are really the hope to be able to keep telling the story because we talked about the fact that survivors are not going to be around soon to bear witness. So the teachers have to be here in order to help the memory, essentially, help the memory of the Holocaust and to teach non-Jews as well. Because this, as I said, this is a, you know, there were literally thousands, millions of non-Jews who were destroyed during uh, World War II and during the Nazi Holocaust. Something very, very huge and uh, disturbing happened in our world uh, 60 years ago. Um, something that must be remembered. Mm -hmm.